how to do the title page transcript. So that function is basically describing the layout of the title page um, and its measurements. So the very like physical materiality of the book itself, um, whether it's framed, whether it has like decorative border around it, um, if it has any printer stamps in the middle that are decorative or engravings like the Augustine text, um, that would go there. And then the letterpress transcription is a literal transcription of the text on the page separated by a line um, in between each thing. So for instance, um, for the St. Augustine one, you would do sancti space, um, perpendicular line space, Augustini and just do it throughout. So, and you want, and you can get as creative or detailed as you want with that. So, if the text is small and um, in italics, you would make that part in italics. If it's in bold, you can make that bold. Um, and you want to do everything that is printed on the page. If you have provenance or marginalia, you're going to save that for the notes section. Um, I know everybody might not have a ruler. We have a notebook that has a ruler here. I don't know if Eduardo wants to share. <laughs> so for Galileo Sidereus Nuncius, for bibliographical transcription, you're going to start by transcribing how the page is laid out. So this isn't the part where you're going to have a textual transcription. You're just going to transcribe what it looks like. Does it have a border? Does it have a very nice engraved printer stamp? Um, you could even say if it has a library stamp on it. Um, and you also could say that you're supposed to say how you measure it and say what the um, height and width of it is. But I know we don't all have um, rulers right now. And then the next step is the literal transcription, where you're going to transcribe the text on the page um, exactly as it is. And in between each word, you're going to put a space and a perpendicular line and then a space. Um, and it can just be like streamlined after that. It doesn't need to be formatted the same way that it is in the book. And you should italicize anything italicized. It should be a very literal transcription other than the format. And you want every aspect of the text on the page. So you want the printer, you want the year. And if the year's in Roman numerals, keep it in Roman numerals. So it's a literal transcription but you're not going to transcribe the marginalia in that section. If there's provenance information or marginalia or anything that's not printed as the title page, you're going to put that in the notes section. To you, yeah, because we're sort of practicing and, and getting a document for tomorrow, yeah. But um, what I think is interesting about this book is that it is a Samuel bond. So it has three texts that are subject related in one and they are printed, they're not from the same edition. So these are three separate editions of three separate texts and then they're bound together. And so I think it would be very interesting to look up some of those editions and see if they're always bound together or frequently bound together and why maybe they are included in this codex as one. Like so the, the everything that is written here that is not printed uh -huh. is supposed to go into the notes, mm -hmm. not the um, page transcript. Yeah, so this would go in. And then um, you could create two registers like this if you wanted, or you can indicate that it's like two registers somehow, or put a line break between them, like put all of this, and then line break, and then all of this. Um, because you know each printed text is different, so you're going to have to get a little creative within the parameters of bibliographical description, which I think is the fun part. But that is for the letterpress transcription, right? That is for the um yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get confused. Okay. No. And this thing you would call an engraving? Yeah, this is an engraving. It's not a printer stamp. And you can see the difference because you can see the marks around the image mm -hmm. um, that shows you that it was pressed after or before the text was pressed. Mm -hmm. So okay. that wouldn't be included in the um, title page transcript. It would be in the notes because it's an engraving. It's not a printer stamp. Yeah, I think the stamp would go, um, it could go in the title page transcription, or it could go in the notes. Mm -hmm. I would probably put it in the notes. Mm -hmm. And then here's some provenance information. So a cataloger wrote Bibliotheque Repel. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
sure what library that is, but it'd be interesting. Provenance, probably. Yeah. And then... 1750, Anne, which is like anno, like the year, 1750. Is that in In Kippet, yeah. And then this, I think, is either shelf marks or somebody's um, initials. Because it says provenance, so you would think that somebody would say who they were. Yeah. <laughs> How's your book? It's great. What is this? I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> and so then you also have a lot of shelf marks yeah. too, which is yeah. fun. From the inventory. Lots of inventory. Ooh. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it even more. So it interestingly oh, has a so frontispiece piece yeah. that is not where a frontispiece piece is normally like located. Normally go, yeah. yeah, so I would indicate that in the notes section, definitely. Okay. And it's possible that you could find these same engravings that are used mm -hmm. in this text used in other texts produced in the same print shop or by the same author. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes mm -hmm. authors traveled around with their engravings as well so that they could print again because they're very valuable. Mm -hmm. And obviously you want to indicate that it's hand painted very nicely. Very nice. And it oh and it has marginalia describing every the single that's line. so great. Yeah. great. So I think that these letters on the side mm -hmm. are because it's, ah. this is the incunable, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so this is like a relic of manuscript culture of organizing the information on the page that sort of goes away as print evolves. Oh, mm -hmm. here, let's put it here. I'll be right there. Carefully open it, not put it down. Okay. Not like this. We can't put it down. Okay. Ooh, so it has marbled um, front fly leaves. Mm -hmm. So you would definitely want to indicate that in the notes. And it's gold gilded on the side. So you have, or yeah, you and you have a lot of interesting information about the binding as well that you can include. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is vellum. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know if other people want to come look at this, but the, the title page, I guess we would call this, is on, printed on vellum in this text. And that's pretty rare. So it's printed on animal skin parchment that was typically used for scribal purposes. Um, a lot of times the ink doesn't take very well to that, but this looks great. Mm -hmm. And then here's the um, provenance information. Mm -hmm. Have fun. <laughs> First, you're going to um, describe the title page, the layout of it. So what size is it? And if it has like any interesting formatting things. So you could say that it is, or the text is oriented in this shape um, that is typical for early 16th century hand press books, um, because it's not a typical title page like some of the other ones have. Like here's another early text that has the same format, right? It's still like trying to find what it wants to like codify is mm. what a title page is in print. It looks a lot like manuscript. So yeah. Yeah. you're just describing the format to um, if it has rules, this one doesn't. Um, there's it, there's not much here to describe for that part. But then then you go on to the transcription, and so you will do a literal transcription. So you'll write in capitals, um, sal salvestio, and then the space, per perpendicular line, space. And then you could write this in small caps if you wanted, because that's sort of how it's oriented. But the perpendicular is only at, at the end of the line? Or at the end of a word. Yeah, at the end of each word. And do we also mark the lines, or do we? No, you don't mark the lines at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in diplomatic transcription of manuscripts, I was used to 
Yeah, yeah. Or to transcribe it and really go to another line, or to transcribe them with a perpendicular. If formula. if I made up the format, I would agree that like I think it'd be good to to do it like make it look like the title page. But this is like the um, traditional way that I hope we can flex, be a little flexible with, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's so fascinating that you found a second text within this text that's not listed in the catalog record, because um, this is exactly why reparative bibliographical description and bibliographical description is important. Um, so, you can also tell by the paper quality between the two texts that are in here, and the fact that it's cropped, like the text is cropped at the top, that these were bound together later. They weren't printed together and might not even have much to correspond with each other, and I think that is also an interesting thing to investigate with Samuel Bonds is the relationship between the texts that were bound together, because somebody bound these together for a reason, and if you are interested in doing some research, maybe you could figure out why, what these texts, what their relationship is, or if you found out some provenance information might indicate why somebody would bind these together. And it looks like also you have a very nice, yeah, here's the... Mm -hmm. Austria Core. So, is everything about Augustine? Does it say Carlos versus Augustus? It no, like or maybe Carlos. it's maybe a number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Roman uh, numeral. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, fourth, I think fourth. I solved the yeah, mystery. But it's not fourth. Uh, six. six. No, here, Carl. Four, yeah, six. Four, You've four, solved four, the mystery? I th yeah, this is six. So it is um, six, yeah. And I think the mystery is that his, he's taken the name August Augustus mm -hmm. as his, like, Catholic name. And so here, the first text in the book is about St. Augustine of Hippo, the na his namesake. And then this text is dedicated to him in German. So he's trying to draw correlation and align himself with St. Augustine, who clearly was important to him. And he had this very expensive engraving done and put in the book as well, which separates these two um, mm -hmm. texts, which is interesting. So he's clearly trying to make a statement about his status mm -hmm. with this text. I tried to uh, transcribe this, mm -hmm. but it's already like... Uh, it's a question in itself to transcribe it. For example, you is a V and the Yeah, so that's a decision that is up to you, whether you want to write the U or the V. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a V that in the word is actually a U for us, um, which happens frequently with print. They'll substitute J's and I's and V's and U's. Um, but I think since we're trying to do a literal transcription, a letterpress transcription, I would do it exactly how it appears there, even if it makes the word not the word. Um, for this decorative, le like, so this is not laid out like a typical title page. So it, it is, a, you chose a hard one, but also it's on vellum, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, just do your best, like, and I think that, you know, I'm interested in people's creative ways to solve problems like this. So if you could find a Unicode symbol that looks like that, <laughs> you don't think? Or sim similar? Yeah, I know, but then I, mean, I didn't have to do all of this, <laughs> like the whole thing. No, um, you can put it into a document. Yeah, you can just put the one symbol because this is like decorative symbol, and then you can keep continue to um, transcribe in Gothic, mm -hmm. in a Gothic font. Mm -hmm. And if you could find a, a Unicode W too. But if not, you know, it's okay. But you could indicate that the W is much larger in your um, letterpress transcription. Okay, so it's actually supposed to resemble the page in the... Not in the format, yeah. So I know, it's confusing, I know, didn't make the rules. <laughs> it's stream, like, it's not a pair, it's like, just like, right until the line breaks naturally, and in between each word, you're gonna have a space, a perpendicular line, and then a space. You don't want it to be formatted the same. In the title page transcript, you would describe the format. 
So then you just write, you just transcribe. For the letterpress transcription? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so do you want to insert a symbol? Didn't you say line breaks in between the words? Yeah, so I'm going to look for the symbol with you that you need in between. You mean the Unicode symbol? No, not for this. Just um, in your word, look for open symbols. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so you're going to look for a line that is straight up. Ah, wait, wait, wait. You mean. Or maybe you know. That thing? Yes. <laughs> white spaces in between. Yeah, no, so you're going to have one space, the line, and then another space. Mm -hmm. And then the word. Yeah, and, and then you don't have line breaks. Ah, okay. <laughs> so all in all, very long. Yeah. But how do I indicate that there's a line break in the... So you could put the double line if you wanted, mm -hmm. um, or it's just not part of the transcription part, because it's just a literal transcription, like what is written on the page is what we're interested in that section. Okay. Um, the image? The image, yeah. So this is an engraving. I would um, put all of that in the notes section and talk about how it's on vellum, talk about how it's an engraving. You can see here with a stamp, mm -hmm. it's really interesting, which is not Graz, it's... It says the KK Lyceum Bibliothek. Yeah, so you, if you wanted to investigate the provenance, you could look for that library. Um, but you can tell it's vellum because the stamp doesn't sit well on it. Like the ink from the stamp ran, which is fascinating that this ink did not run. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would describe that um, in the notes section. I was going to say, maybe this is from something else, but it's not. Oh, and um, this thing here also in the notes and not in the letterpress transcription? Right. Letterpress transcription is only for printed text. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this would go in the notes as like provenance. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question about gatherings? Yes. <laughs> OK. It's very complicated, yes. So, um, so instead of octavo, oh, let me, would it be more helpful if I put the, um, the, um, the formula up? But describing it, do you want the slide with the formula description? Can I put two slides up? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's uh, it's slides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can you open the Dropbox? The class Dropbox? Because that has the um, formula description. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Take your time. Anyway, well, while you do that, so it's in there, but so if, um, you're going to want to refer to the um, to the formula that I outlined. So how to how to write the the bibliographical formula because that's the math complicated part. <laughs> but we actually we were so yeah. What's your question about the system? Mm -hmm. So they are numbered from mm -hmm. A to T, and mm -hmm. they are in a normal order. But here, I'm just going to put this all the way on the. Um, <laughs> the words, um, thank you. Yeah. It's not so clear um, with the pagination because um, the, um, this is the pagination, right? So mm -hmm. we have as a signature. But you use this to do the pagination formula, or the pagination is at the end of the formula. Yeah, if you pull up the slide, it'll be easier because it's super complicated. But you, what's your what's your question? Uh, the question is how he counts the the, the, choir, the choirs or the gatherings. So it's quite clear, but then the, the, why he, I'm, it's not so clear why sometimes he also uh, adds this, uh, so like a page, and then not any longer. And I was not sure. Okay, yeah, I have a slide about that. Um, so what that would be is here is also no number yeah so th this is but since this is two 
you can infer that this is A1, so it yeah. doesn't have any prefatory material. Yeah. Since this is an early text, um, right. they didn't have standardized printing practices, so later when they do become more standardized, this will have like a small A or an asterisk, um, the type, or not have any signature at all, but it wouldn't be part of the A page. Because um, you can imagine, this is one big piece of paper, so they had to, that's why probably the title page is pretty plain, is because they had to lay it out with the, with the individual type, along with the rest of the A signature. And then they print, turn around and print on the back. So, this is A. And then these are inferred until you get to B. So that was four. So you have to count five, six, seven, eight, and then B. So it's an octavo. And um, if you pull up the PowerPoint, it has directions on how to describe that it's signed. So you would have the money sign. So it means sign. And then you would say four the number four, and then A, because it's signed for four of the first four A's, and then the rest of the A's are inferred. Uh -huh. And it differs from gathering to gathering. I mean, for, for example, uh, gathering B has some more numbers. I mean, it also has D5, D6. Yeah, so then you'd have to have a comma uh -huh. and say money sign, however many, say T is signed to six, six, and then no, and then no more. Yeah, so you would say money sign, six, T, and since it's an octavo, we know that the last two are inferred. But so the signature part is about is about this count, like whether they sign there. It's not about the gatherings. You've already established that it's an octavo. But we have we also have sure, sure. question because then it, so it's D six, D seven, D eight. And then there is no gathering number any longer, and there are only there is no gathering number. And they tell you also, this is, so this is a very early print. They would not do this later in later print at all. They tell you it goes through T, that the signatures go through T, but that's very rare. And they tell you it's a um, quinter. Yeah, they're telling you it's at the end. They're telling you about the last pages, I think. They're like, it's signed regularly, A through T. Or it, yeah, 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 that is, that is very cool. I would put that in my notes if I were you. I'm glad you guys are excited about it. <laughs> How's it going? Find anything cool? Yeah, we thought it was easy and then it gets more mysterious. Yeah, yeah. The longer you look, the more anomalies you'll find. So here there's sort of in, well, there's the instruction about the gatherings and how they're ordered because it's too, too, dis or seems like too distinct. That's so funny. We just saw that in that in that book too. At the end they tell you about the gatherings. What, what year is this one? Uh, this is 1515. Yeah, so these are very early texts before print was standardized, and you're not going to see that in later printed hand press texts. So they did it for you. They wrote, they wrote their own formula there for you. We should check that first. Yeah, well, it's good to it's good to like be able to check back, you know, and yeah. check your work. We can yeah. say that there are. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's, it's got the um, latter portion before um, marginal the former here. Something that I usually and then give some description about these uh, gatherings. The yeah, so, so those yeah. gatherings are probably irregular, yeah. and so they're telling you that. Huh. Um, this is one. And this I might have been the for the binder the or the just theater. for the owner to know that they had the whole text, even if the gatherings, because people aren't used to the signatures, yeah. you know, at this point, because print's so new. I was curious about what well, well, was um, of sign for some reason the bulk of the book. Okay, that is what we were all just talking about, which is great. Um, that's the thing with the money sign. So you know how you can I get in here, sorry. Um you know how you use the signatures to figure out the gatherings? Mm -hmm. That this is another section where you say how many are signed throughout. Oh, so how many, because right. some are inferred. So you're going to have, right. for this, 
again, the title page is part of the A signature, which is weird, but this whole table is doing that, so I don't know. Um, and it's not signed, so you could indicate that as like in parentheses, like minus one A or A one. Just, okay, so, you, so it's, it's this part. There, sorry, it's this part. Bad. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. I did. I didn't write a complicated one because I'm trying to just give like the basics because it's not much time. But anyway, so let's see what's signed. So there's a two, inferred, inferred, b, b two. So it's a quarto. Oh, I should bring up the image that. Um, and it's signed. So you would have money sign two. Yeah. Signed B through the rest, and then you can say for A, like, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, so here we have a title page that is not signed. Let's let's ignore that because that's throwing us off. Because that's just an anomaly that is complicated to describe. And if you want to be an expert in bibliographical description, we can figure it out sometime. But right now, let's just look at the regular pages. So. Um, B is signed mm -hmm. so once, B is signed twice, with um, Roman caps and Arabic numerals, and then inferred, inferred. And we let's assume this goes throughout, two, inferred, inferred. So what you would have is money sign, two, B through, Yep. Meaning that it's signed the first two pages of each gathering and the rest are not. So here, well, yeah, this is big, here, money sign two would mean two, the, specifically the first two folios of each choir have their choir signature. Yes. Uh -huh. Signed. So this is then okay. the. We are, you're using manuscript words, but yeah. I'm sorry. No, sorry. no, you're right. It's the same thing. Then you can see that I have no, no, no bibliographic. No, it's great. Yeah. This is a cool book, and so and this is a, a really weird one. So do your best, because then it's not signed at all. So, oh no, here it is. F. Okay. So F2. F2 and the G is the last letter. As so far as inferred, we, inferred, and then I'll help you write it. So it's specifically, you normally indicate the position. I mean, for instance, when you when we specify that the folios are numbered, we specify where they're numbered and how they're numbered. So they're printed, original, foliation uh, in the upper right, recto. Do you you do the same with the? That is what is pagination. Yeah, 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 but what I mean is the same way you indicate the position of the pagination, you do the same with the choir, the gathering. You do, you do both for this. So I okay. think this is an extra print thing, which is why it's very unfamiliar to you, um, because you wouldn't, you don't have this for in manuscripts. You, you do. You I have do. it yeah, yeah, for yeah. how All to, how to like the formation of the choirs that form the yeah yeah the thing is we don't normally register where at least i don't where they are in the page we you don't, don't say, say where they are in the page uh -huh. they're usually uh -huh. they're almost always down here at the bottom because uh -huh. for us okay. they're always in the at the end of the choir okay yeah, okay that's for instance yeah um so here's so it's paginated mm. um maybe throughout but, so you would call it this paginated even though no it's fully okay. yeah. <laughs> Um And then, yeah, I can help you write the okay. thing if you want. So, yeah. So then it's a uh, dollar sign to uh, indicating that the first two. Mm -hmm. And then you can write B through G. So we've got three colors on the Yep. And what about A? That's complicated. You can um, write in, before that. You can write um, dollar sign two a, and then that will show that it just dollar sign two then a sorry. And yeah. Yeah. That indicates that. Um, so you want the two right next to the B too. So, um, for the Galileo text, it is signed on the first two pages of the gathering. So how you would indicate that in the signature statement is money sign two signed, and this is A's different, so we'll say signed 
B through G. And that means that consistently B through G has signatures on the first two pages of each gathering. And then when you have something else, you can have a semicolon and then say for the A that some of you have this as well, the title page is 1A or A1. Um, and that is not typical. Normally preparatory material is an asterisk or a small A. Um, but since the title page is not signed because it's a title page and then the next page is A2, you would have money sign two signed A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look at me. I mean, that, this, like, I'm trying to offer like a very basic formula that can get so much more complicated. I shared the Bowers chapter in resources if you really want to blow your mind with how confusing this can get. So it's hard to uh, accommodate every anomaly that we find um, in this short class period because I'm not able to give a full uh, bibliographical description course in four hours. But um, so get creative with it, try to describe the text, but this, this is the, technically the formula and you're all gonna have anomalies. Um, you can put them in the notes if you want. This is the index for the first section. There are indices for each section. So. Wow, that's cool. Oh my God. He's very cute. And then we also have with the last book, which is on urine. Um, yeah, I just saw it was like a table of stones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, this is the section on stones, and then here's the section on urine. So is this this an apothecary text? Do you think? I mean, it's a medical text, so. Mm -hmm. um, it, se it seems like directly related to creating um, like tinctures for healing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, yeah. 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 With the plants and then with the stones. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so cool. What is this? It's a table. Of the um, stones, table about the tract on stones. It's like a contents or index. Thing. Do you think it means um, like minerals and metals? Yeah, because there's an entire section about different stones and their properties. There's a section on animals and their properties, and a section on plants. Oh, and what properties. a cool book! So, yeah. Obviously, you're not going to be able to describe all this in a couple hours, but yeah, you can describe whatever you think is most interesting. How's it going? <laughs> oh, you found more vellum. It's all vellum. Wow. I mean, no. Well, let's look for no chain lines. So it's, chain lines can help you identify the format. So if you folded up the piece of paper over there, then you would know that chain lines go this way for an octavo, and then they would go this way for a quarto and switch like every time because you're folding it again. And so that is how you identify, it's one way to identify the production of a paper um, hand press text, but yeah, there are no chain lines. And so there's also gonna be no watermarks. Mm -hmm. And this is vellum. Some vellum looks more like paper than um, mm -hmm. other, like we can see it's here. Incredibly soft. Yeah. It's very high quality. Yeah. You know, like it seems high quality oh, to me, because I can't tell which one is the, the hairy side and the left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, I don't know, you're right. Wow. I and mean, then you have like b bad vellum in the front and back where they were like waste paper or whatever. And then this is, this is paper. Yeah. You can see the chain lines. That's so... Then here's more paper. Probably, I think when they bound it like this, which is must be a later binding, um, 
then they put paper to protect it in the fly leaves, back and front fly leaves. Is there front fly leaves? And then mm -hmm. this huge piece of gum. It's like really mm -hmm. thick, yeah, and still printed on. Imagine pulling this through a printing press. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so soft. Fat so you have it. Yeah, but it's only in the first few pages, it's only the first four, and then it stops. And so this is a... So, and then we have the reference. It's, it's vellum, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm, I can't say for certain how it was produced because we don't know a standardized size of that they pulled through the... This is a very difficult book to describe <laughs> that we probably can't figure out. But how would I um, put this down in the... You know, yeah, kind of we'll try to do a like edited version of it. So yeah, here's more paper. So cool. Okay, so what this is weird. So this has a signature, mm -hmm. but what is this? D. Is this? Yeah, but what is the symbol? A little A. Yeah. Okay. I think it's supposed to be a small A actually, which would be typical for prefatory material. Mm -hmm. So we have so, two, three. Four. Mm. Yeah, and then it stops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um. also the, the engravings, they also have numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, so that means that they're probably part of an emblem series. Mm -hmm. So they tell a story together, and um, if somebody cut this out, they would know where it went in the emblem series and also indicates to the reader that these these engravings are maybe more, tell the story more than the text. There's not a lot of text on the page, right? So they need to go together and these are gonna be printed after the text is printed. So they also need to know where to go, right? So probably 13 was printed with this text and then they put, they're like, oh, engraving 13. Um, goes there, yeah. Would that also go into the um, describing of the choirs in this formula thing, or is that, would you put that somewhere else? Um, you put that in the notes, probably. Mm -hmm. So these signatures, I don't understand them. <laughs> They're very strange. This book is very strange. <laughs> I get why they didn't want to pull it. Okay. <laughs> You're right, it's D. It's D, E, F. So I don't know where the first few pages are. And they're lowercase, which is also weird. So that's where you would start. And so, how many leaves are in a gathering? You say choir for manuscripts. Well, manuscript. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look at like think about pushing the boundaries between print and manuscript. Here, we're printing on vellum. Like so. So yeah, there's a lot of bibliographical questions with us about the materiality. Okay. So you would say. You would skip the first part because it, it's, you can't say whether it's a folio or anything because it's animal skin and not paper. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you would just start with the letter. So you would say little d, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I think it's six. Yeah, here's E. It's six. So, you know, that's not a standard um, printing, like, way to describe it at all. So um, you just have to skip that, I think. Okay, okay so there's six leaves in a gathering. Mm -hmm. So it's hypothetically because it's, it's vellum. Um, so for these purposes, you would say little d, mm -hmm. um, and then we would see if there's six throughout, if it is signed six throughout um, to the last letter. But if we want to assume it is for our purposes, because um, we don't want any other weird stuff when we're trying to just learn how to describe things, right? Let's see what the last letter is. Um, uppercase B. Cool. 
Let's see what's in the letter before that. <laughs> oh, that'd be. I thought it was P, yeah. Okay, so it goes to capital P. My God. Capital P, because they go through the whole small alphabet and then they start over. So that's how you could also determine how many pages there are. Technically, you should count them because there could be print anomalies, but the whole alphabet, assuming it's 23 letters, twice, or to P. So then you have to figure out how many letters there is to P in the Latinized alphabet times six. That's your number of pages. For this, let's say little d to uppercase p, six, uh, superscript six. And then if you do that math, how many leaves, comma, foliated, scribally foliated. Oh, good. They say 290. Yeah, just take that. Yeah. And then they just say 36 centimeters. Like, what is. Because what is this literally, like, wouldn't fit. It doesn't fit into the formula. Ah. You have. You, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Because you have to have page, and then this is a folio. But if you have an, like, unknown amount of animal skin, you can fold it to be six pages, right? Like, or it could be folios, and they just um, signed it like that. But you can't, it can't actually be, there's no word for it. There's no six, six sumo, like, so it can't actually be a folded piece of paper to make six pages, because here's four, and then when you fold again, it's eight, so there's no, mm -hmm. so that's a very weird thing. Why? Why would you do that? If you yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'm sure it's a question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah, like it's, it's this practice and it's going to give you a document to work with tomorrow, but it's not going to be perfect because it's not even in the library catalog. So the 36 centimeters, what the. Can I see her? Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the length of the book. So you would put that in the um, first part when you, the title page part, you say that. Um, do you, aren't you supposed to give us a Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Because it's not. Here. Well, we shouldn't close it, but. Um, maybe 10, how many inches? Yeah, that's a centimeter, okay, let's do something. We're in Austria. <laughs> um, 25, I would say. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you got a wild book. I'm glad you waited for it. 